Joining us is the analyst behind the call, Michael Pachter. Michael, thank you for joining us. You know, the whole thing with, with some of these retail trading frenzies and, and short squeezes, which Fubo has gotten caught up in and does have a significant short interest, is that it's not fundamentally driven. So why then are you raising your price target on the stock? Yeah, good question. And to be fair, I mean, Fubo's a real company. Uh, GameStop's a real company. AMC's a real company. So it's not like it, any of these, except perhaps AMC, was on the verge of bankruptcy. <clears throat> the the math behind the short squeeze actually makes sense. I, I read the original Wall Street Vets post, and it's incredibly thoughtful and well-reasoned. And I think it's a warning to shorts, like don't short 100% of the outstanding shares because you're setting up a squeeze. Fubo is a real company. Um, there's a lot of pessimism that they can't stand out, that there are tons of offerings out there that they're, you know, they're not competitive. In fact, they have more sports than anybody. And, and what makes that a huge advantage is that cord cutters are looking for sports, and sports is a natural for incremental ad minutes, especially foreign sports. So to the extent that these guys are showing, you know, Spanish League or Italian League or English Premier League football, there's at least 10 or 12 minutes per hour that they can sell, which means that their ad ARPU goes from $6 currently to probably 12. The company's talking 20, you know, per subscriber per month. That'll get them to profitability in a couple of years. And the question is, how big do they grow? It's hard to throw a price target out there, but I think that with 30 million cord cutters in the U.S. and these guys having only half a million subscribers, mm -hmm. seeing them grow to three or four million is likely. Then they have sports betting as a free option, and it really might mm -hmm. pay off. So, so they clearly have a lot of sports, as, as you said, Michael, though it's mainly by bringing together an over-the-top version of other people's sports rights that's traditionally been delivered uh, via, via cable. W what is the level of threat to them if there are more moves like that of NBC uh, SN recently to shift everything to Peacock, their own streaming service, and or the likes of Amazon buying more of the, the rights themselves and taking it away from the cable providers who are, are looking for a route uh, to, to deliver rights they already had via over-the-top methods. To the extent that those rights are exclusive, uh, clearly Fubo loses. So, you know, if we see something like uh, NFL football, you know, that is it has exclusive rights to different networks or English Premier League go exclusive with NBCSN, then sure, Fubo's not going to get it. But if you're a true sports fan, it's, it's just like subscribing to Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime. You're going to end up with multiple services. And Amazon's not going to be the over-the-top solution. Um, I think that people will get skinny bundles. I think they'll get Fubo. But you're right. I mean, I think that if enough sports migrates away from Fubo, they're in trouble. And I think that's the short thesis, that competition is going to put them out of business. I don't see Amazon getting enough for bang for its buck on exclusive sports. And I think they're going to be very targeted. Okay. Michael, thanks for joining us. Much appreciated. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.